Okay, for those who haven't seen this yet, uh, any of these videos yet, my name is Michael Wolf. I'm in fear for my life um, from uh, a corrupt, very corrupt county. Um, I've been not wanting to do this because of fear of my safety from getting this out, but I think that this is the best thing to do now. Um, I'm going to describe what happened to me. Um, for the record, this is not why I was leaving the country. The reason I was leaving the country is because of persecution at the hands of uh, part of public housing authorities um, who refused to give me accommodations for my disabilities and instead treat me like shit because I have personality disorder and they think I'm an asshole instead of understanding that I have brain damage and personality disorder. Um, anyway, the, the, this started about early June last year when I moved into a place on the Klamath River. Um, it was a very remote location at the end of Johnson's Road um, outside of Oric. Um, right on the Klamath River, the, um, uh, I'm only going to talk about what happened, I won't talk about the, uh, other stuff that happened out there with the landlord, which may or may not be related, I don't know, but, um, relevant information is that, um, I was having problems with, and we were all having problems with people running us off the road. This is a road that's 14 miles long, and the first to the middle, 12 of which has sheer drops on either side, um, you know, one side or the other from, because it's on a, on a ridge, runs on a very narrow finger ridge, Johnson's Road, and it's a very dangerous road, uh, just as is, and then we have people out there that were driving, you know, big old pickup trucks thinking they own the road, and uh, I called the Sheriff's Department when I first got out there, and they told me they couldn't do anything about it, that uh, they didn't have any officers that would do anything told me to contact CHP. CHP officer I spoke to and gave the report to, which I gave the report of the four, uh, four or five of the license plates of the vehicles that were doing this. Um, um, anonymously, he was more concerned about my out-of-state plates having just moved there than, uh, than being run off the road. Um, this gives you an idea of what law enforcement does in this country now. Uh, I'm sorry, but this is across the board. I've never experienced anything different anywhere I've been in the last ten years. California, Washington, Idaho. Um, sorry, I'm having a lot of pain. I'm um, weak. I'm uh, not sure what's going on. Stress is a big part of it. But um, anyway, um, I later found out they were growers and decided that since the police weren't going to do anything about them running us off the road, I would try and do something because of the fact that they were growers. I couldn't figure out anything until a few months later I saw um, something about the Drug Enforcement Task Force and contacted them directly and they seemed quite interested not only in the bus, in the uh, grow operation, but more importantly they were interested in the um, um, fact that one of the officers that I spoke to was the Sheriff's Department, a uh, red-haired gentleman. Um, insisted that there was nobody to take care of drug busts, that there was nobody to do anything about marijuana grows in the county, that they only had one person, and I took that as a sign that the Drug Enforcement Task Force would be on my side. Um, by and by, they got busted. Well, sort of. The three trimmers, I guess, that they had hired um, were busted. The two people that main, still man the, ran, ran the main operation were still there and were there immediately afterwards setting it back up. Um, as near as I could tell, there was no evidence that they were taking it down, and all the activity I saw suggested that they were building it back up. Um, I, I could be wrong, I don't know, but I'm um, going on what I, what I, what I observe. Um, okay, Max, sorry, my dog's about to, yeah, like that. <sighs> Silly dog, my dog's under the tripod, sorry. I'm having a lot of table cup, trouble taking care of him, and, and myself, to be honest. Um, I'm scared to death, I just not doing well. Um, anyway, by and by the bus, the operation got busted. Only three people got busted. The two main guys didn't. They were still running things, it looks like. And I know this more so because of all this harassment and stuff I've been under and all this crap with my landlord. The uh, landlord's brother told me one, well, April 29th, that the growers were trying to kill me um, because they thought I turned them in. And, um, um, sorry, I'm quite scared. I, uh, 
was trying to sell my vehicle at the time. I've been trying to move, um, trying to find a place to stay that isn't in a county that I'm going to be harassed and mistreated by social workers. And um, um, thought that the, maybe the growers were, were, the, were the ones. And I didn't have enough money to move, so I was desperate to sell this vehicle. And um, I went down there and thought maybe it just seems didn't, things didn't seem right with this, with the buyer, the potential buyer. And, and it was also another buyer I was going to meet with, too. So I, I went ahead and arranged to meet with this guy and took my pistol with me in the car just in case. And I forgot I had left it in the door, um, which I did because, you know, just, you know, this was right after the, this was the first trip I took away from my property after the uh, threat. And I was concerned they might ambush me on the road, so I had it at my door and I just forgot about it. And I did, never met with the guy, and I've never heard from him since. And I really strongly think that it was the officer that arrested me that, that, uh, that did that, that sent that email and was trying to meet with me. But, um... On my way home, I saw I was up on or uh, Bald Hills Road, about mile 9.7. There's a little turnout, and I saw a white SUV with two gentlemen sitting in it. And I was going about 50, 55 in 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 that in that area. And the road is not marked; it's divided with the dotted yellow line down the middle, which in the state of California is a prima facie speed law. It means that you know, the speed limit is effectively 55 miles an hour. And so I was going. 5055, which was safe and reasonable for that section of the road, and these I saw these two officers, and they saw me, and immediately started putting their stuff down, and s looked like they were starting the vehicle, and I saw them say, "There he is." Um, I can read lips a little bit, and they said, "There he is." They're not not there. It is. That's important. Um, anyway, they. Um, I didn't know. I my first thought was it was the growers trying to ambush me. So I accelerated a bit, um, and my turn for my road was just a couple of tenths of a mile away. So I, I went there and made my turn for my road. It was a dirt road. It's kind of, kind of a, a T junction or a Y junction like that. And I made the turn and I immediately stopped when I saw the lights behind me. I saw emergency lights on the vehicle. But then I saw a gentleman out of the vehicle on the passenger side who was in military garb. This is extremely hard for me to talk about. I'm not enjoying, didn't enjoy, <laughs> um, he had a M M481 that was painted, and I recognize the M481 because I used to have a replica when I was doing airsoft with friends in, in San Diego area, so I was very familiar with the weapon appearance because the replica I had was an <laughs> extremely good replica, um, visually, and, uh, the uh, they didn't have any identifying marks. They didn't identify themselves as officers. I was extremely unnerved by the whole situation and concerned that they were in an unmarked vehicle and and pulled me over like that in the middle of nowhere. And this was after I had heard a story from someone that um, told me about incidents of of people impersonating officers and raiding marijuana grows and. And, and and other things and and you know pretending to be law enforcement officers and it sounded like it was something that happened all the time so I got scared I put it in gear and started to roll but I didn't go anywhere and when the officer on the driver's side ordered me to stop I turned around with my head out the window cautiously and told him I didn't see any indication that they were law enforcement and wasn't didn't didn't feel safe and the officer's vest said police on it he did not respond to that he didn't respond when I asked him for photo identification, and I was scared that they were going to be shooting me at any minute the whole time. And then they arrested me, and they asked, well, they they ordered me out of the vehicle, and then asked me if I had any weapons. And I remembered the gun, and he said, where was it? And I told him where, and he, I told him the door, and he couldn't find it. And I told him how to open the the door compartment on my 19, 1992 Mercedes 500 SEL. Um, the officer was quite mean to me. He accused me of being a pedophile, telling me I had child porn on my camera and my computer and stuff, and just treating me like fucking shit. Just for... <sighs> anyway, they arrested me and took me to jail. I've never been to jail, well, once for similar... Yeah,
I can't do this. I'm, I'm gonna cut it short. I spent five days in Humboldt County Jail and I couldn't accommodate my diet. And I almost died from dehydration because my colon was so clogged I couldn't even absorb water. Um, I went to the ER immediately afterwards. They ignored my medical slips inside. They wouldn't treat me. They wouldn't help me. And I felt like I was gonna die. I didn't even it because my lower intestine had swollen so badly. Come here, Max. Come up here. Come up here. Come up here. But, um, some things bother me about this situation is I recognized the officer. I finally remembered where I saw him because I recognized him when he was arresting me. I didn't know where I'd saw him and seen him, and that was, it was a week and a half after the bust, and um, he was coming out from the grow operation, from the, where the bust grow operation had been, or was, is, is still, and so if that incident isn't recorded, if he didn't document that he went out there for official police business, then, then we know what's going on, and the other thing is that I told him that the grow operation was still ongoing, so if he hasn't reported that and, and finished busting the operation the rest of the way, or the two other operations I told him are starting, then we know he's a corrupt officer. But um, the fact of the matter is I called the law enforcement when I heard the threat and they didn't do anything. So I go to try and protect myself and they don't do anything. And they just arrest me and nearly kill me. And uh, so I'm trying to find an attorney and um, got a hold of an, an Egyptian Prometheus law firm down in San Francisco and I couldn't. He only takes payment over PayPal and I sent him a letter saying that I couldn't pay via PayPal because I can't get the cash that I have from selling things into my account because it's in another state and I can't I can't find a branch that does shared branching with credit unions to be able to make this deposit so I sent him a money order and he refused it and told me he's not going to represent me and was quite rude to me and I, the San Francisco Lawyer Referral Service won't refer me to a lawyer and I don't trust any lawyers in Humboldt County they're all corrupt even even the ones that say they help people there's no eviction defense attorneys, there's no civil rights defendant attorneys, they're all, it's all a big club up there, they all just make money off people that go through Humboldt County and don't, that aren't, I mean they make money off everybody, even the growers, I mean this is, this cop is obviously extorting these growers. I, I heard from a neighbor, I won't say who or where, that witnessed a quote-unquote bust, but that was never recorded. This was federal and state office, federal and, and local officers went out there and confiscating acres of marijuana and not recording it as a bust. This is... Why do I have to get involved in all this shit? Why do I have to be witness to this shit? And why does it have to risk my fucking life? I need help. I need help. I need a lawyer. I need help dealing with this. I, I can't be in jail anymore. I, that'll kill me. And I don't want to lose my dog. And I don't want to die. Someone please help me. Please. I have no family to turn to. My friends don't have any resources to help me. And this personality disorder means that nobody understands what I'm going through, that it's not me, it's this brain damage. gonna try and get this to the media. That's the only safe way I know to help. To get help. I just don't know what to do. No one's gonna believe me because it's a weapon charge. Even though I have all the fucking evidence that I didn't... that I was just trying to protect my own life. I'm so scared. I'm so scared. I'm 
sorry for... No, I'm not. You need to see what it's like for me when this is bad. I don't know what else to say. I don't know what to do. I can I can barely even take care of myself. I have dementia. I have complex kidney cyst that's probably cancer. I have colitis. I have stress effect disorder, generalized anxiety. I've had severe depression for nine years, eight, eight years. I have memory problems, organizational problems, back pain, mid back pain, neck pain, um, fibromyalgia. I'm just a mess. I've been under stress the last eight years trying to get on disability because I got brain damage. <laughs> All I want to do is live a normal life and help out. <laughs> I had a career, I was a programmer, I was making 125 an hour and I gave it up so I could work with wolves. Well, I didn't give it up, it gave up. The world gave it up. 9-11 kind of killed my career, but I could have fought back, but I decided to help wolves instead. And that's why this diary is called Diary of a Wolf, because I feel like I'm a wolf, and they're not treated very well in this country. People hate them, and they don't, they don't have any reason to. So you don't have any reason to hate me and treat me the way you do. I'm just trying to help you all.